Hello everyone, welcome to this video on YOLO X, exceeding the YOLO series in 2021. In this video, we will review the YOLO X research paper and understand its components. Before starting the video, a little bit about me. My name is Rohit Tukreja, I'm a computer vision and deep learning expert and a freelance course instructor. So what exactly is YOLO? YOLO is an abbreviation for you only look once. It is a series of object detection algorithms. The first version was published by Joseph Redman and team in 2015. Since then, there has been a series of developments in YOLO detectors like YOLO 9000, YOLO V3, V4, V5, YOLO R, and the most recent one is YOLO X that we will get to know about in this video. This video is sponsored by Altium, the industry standard and most professional PCB design software on the market. I've used Altium for designing printed circuit boards to build my own custom Arduinos and high-speed on-edge computer vision projects. When I tested other PCB CAD softwares out there, I found that nothing came close to the flexibility, ease of use and power of Altium Designer. I mean, if you ever worked on PCB design for computer vision applications, you know that transmitting video signals is a very delicate task, with many high-speed signals that you have to consider in terms of electromagnetic noise and crosstalk. Altium helps you to easily manage and route high-speed signals with length tuning to ensure that you receive clear image quality on the other end. What's really great is that we have partnered up with Altium to bring you an exclusive discount for our Augmented Startups community. Sign up with the link down below to get 30% off monthly of the perpetual license of Altium Designer. You can also try out Altium Designer for free for the first 15 days. Just click the link down below to get started. So let's start reviewing the YOLOX research paper. This research was conducted by Yi Xing, Liu Songtao, Wang Feng, Li Zeming, and Sun Jian of Magmi technology team. Now let's go through the abstract and understand what the hype is all about. In the abstract, they have explained the improvements of Jolo X with respect to its previous versions. Here they are saying they are presenting some experienced improvements to Yolo series, forming a new high performance detector, Yolo X. They switched the Yolo detector to an anchor free manner and conducted other advanced detection techniques such as decoupled head and leading label assignment strategies such as SIM OTA to achieve state-of-the-art results across a large-scale range of models. Now here they are explaining the improved results they got with YOLO X. So for YOLO X Nano with only 0.91 million parameters and 1.08 gigaflops, they were able to hit 25.3% average precision. And for YOLO V3, one of the most widely used detectors in the industry, YOLO X surpasses it by 3.0% average precision, which is a great improvement. And with respect to YOLO V5, which currently is the fastest detector, they have achieved 50.0% AP on Coco at a speed of 68.9 FPS on a Tesla V100, which exceeds the YOLO V5 by 1.8% average precision. With this YOLO X model, they have won the first place on Streaming Perception Challenge. It was a workshop on autonomous driving at CBPR 2021. Now, in the introduction, they are explaining the objective of this research. So they are saying that over the past two years, there has been some major advancements happening in the object detection domain. Many researchers have focused on anchor-free detectors uh, and used advanced labor assignment strategies and worked on making end-to-end -end NMS-free detectors. But these advancements has never been integrated in the YOLO families. YOLO V4, V5 are still using the anchor based detectors and handcrafted assignment rules. So in this section, they are saying as the YOLO V4 and V5 are a little over optimized for anchor free manner, they chose YOLO V3 Darkman 53 model as their baseline model. But they did not use the original YOLO V3, they used a version called YOLO V3 SPP. Here, SPP stands for Spatial Pyramid Pooling. So instead of using a traditional pooling layer, they used a spatial pyramid pooling layer before the fully connected layer. It makes the model more generalized for varied size objects. Convolution layers always compute an output of each map that's proportional to a specific ratio called subsampling ratio. This constraint of fixed size isn't because of the conv layer but due to the fully connected layers. The FC layers always have a fixed length vector input 
and to solve this problem they replaced the last pooling layer with a spatial pooling layer with SPP the input image can be of any size this not only allows arbitrary aspect ratios but also arbitrary scales now let's understand the implementation details as mentioned earlier they have used YOLO v3 SPP darknet 53 as their baseline model and when we talk about the training implementation the training settings are mostly consistent from baseline to the final model the training cycle is in total 300 epochs and 5 epoch warm up on coco train 2017 they used a sgt with momentum for training uh, with an initial learning rate of 0.01 and a momentum of 0.9 to adjust the learning rate, they used a cosine error scheduler and a weight decay of 5e-4. They processed the images in batches of 128 by default of typical 8 GPU devices. Now let's understand the major key components which are responsible for the improvements of Yolo X. First one is decoupled head. So object detection has two subtasks. One is localization, that means to locate an object in the image. Your second is classification. That means to classify that object into a class. The conflict between classification and regression is a well-known problem. Previous versions of YOLO series were using a coupled head pipeline. As you can see in the topmost section of the image, they are using a single pipeline for classification and regression. To find out if there is any room for improvement, the research team ran an experiment to understand the impact of decoupled head. As you can see in the second part of the image, they are using a distributed pipeline for localization and classification. They notice that replacing the YOLO head with the decoupled head significantly improves the convergence speed. And this becomes essential for an end-to-end -end NMS free model. The second key component is anchor free mechanism. To understand anchor free mechanism, first let's, let's understand what exactly are anchor boxes. The way previous YOLO versions used to work was the model divides the image into an n by n grid and then model predicts the anchor boxes. Basically, anchor boxes are the candidates or the potential bounding box for an image to be present in that grid. Then they will optimize those anchor boxes to find the most fitted bounding box. So as you can see in this image, this image is first divided into this n by n grid and then they predict all of these candidates that we call anchor boxes and then the model will optimize these anchor boxes to find the final bounding box. However, the anchor mechanism has many known problems. First, to achieve optimal detection performance, one needs to conduct clustering analysis to determine a set of optimal anchor before training. Second, anchor mechanism increases the complexity of detection heads as well as number of prediction for each image. On some edge AI systems, moving such large amount of prediction between devices may become a potential bottleneck in terms of the overall latency. Anchor-free detectors have developed rapidly in the past two years to tackle these problems. These works have shown that the performance of anchor-free detectors can be on par with anchor-based detectors. It significantly reduces the number of design parameters. So switching YOLO to an anchor-free manner is quite simple. They just reduce the predictions for each location from 3 to 1 and make them directly predict 4 values. Two offsets in terms of the left top corner and the height and the width of the predicted box. The third key component is that they use some advanced data augmentation to boost your X performance. The first augmentation technique they use is called mosaic data augmentation. So this technique will take four different images of different sizes and take an arbitrary piece from each one of them. Then it stretches those pieces to form a new image altogether. As you can see in this image, a piece is taken from the upper image and the lower image and then they are stretched together to form a new one. This technique will help the model to detect small cell objects and will help in generalize the localization of objects and make it less dependent on the environment the object is in. Also, it helps the model to learn to generalize the object occlusions. 
that means when a part of an object is hided or not present in an image so consider if the wings of the airplane are not present or occluded with buildings or clouds we still want our model to detect that airplane so this technique where we are taking random crops from four images and stitching them together help our model to learn complex situations and patterns the other technique they use is called mix up data augmentation in this they take one image and overlay it on the other image to form a new image as you can see here we have a dog image and a cat's image and one is overlaid on the other to make a new image which has both dog and the cat now the model will learn to detect both of the object in that image this improves the model robustness to corrupt labels avoid overfitting as it is hard to memorize virtual labels and increase generalization mixup provides a smoother linear transition from one class decision boundary to another this provides a better measure of uncertainty the model trained with mixup is more stable in terms of model predictions great now let's understand how these key components has impacted the model's performance so this table is showing the roadmap improvements of each key component when combined the original yolo v3 was getting an average precision of 44% and in yolo x they started with the baseline yolo v3 with 38.5 ap when they combined these key components they saw a significant improved results decoupled head boosted the performance by 1.1% augmentation techniques that we discussed earlier helped the network to boost its performance by 2.4% Using the anchor free mechanism helps the model average precision to increase by 0.9% and other techniques like multiple positives and CMOTA boosted the performance by 2% each. Great. So that was fun going through the research paper together. I hope you get to understand how YoloX works. You can enroll for our brand new course called YoloX Pro Dashboard where you will learn YoloX object detection, how to train YoloX on custom dataset natively and on Google Colab, we will integrate state-of-the-art tracking algorithms and create multiple apps. Finally, we will build a full-fledged professional analytical dashboard that will be integrated to the AI engine made with YOLOX and SORT. We have an amazing library of courses related to artificial intelligence, augmented reality and computer vision. Make sure to check them out on augmentedstartup.com. Thank you so much for taking time and watching this video. Have a good day. This is us, Automated Startups.